And then to actually start writing the code for it, we double click this. This will launch Microsoft Visual Studio, which is a separate program to edit in. This program has highlighting and things like that. For those of you in Beaverton, just so that you know, it will ask you for a Microsoft account probably. And in your case, it will be whatever your student ID number is at beaverton.k12.or.us. So that happens to be a Microsoft account for us. If you don't have that particular kind of an account pre-built, you'll have to actually go and create one. You can make one on any Hotmail site or anything like that. So to begin with, notice that it's got a bunch of things already pre-done for you. So these are importing libraries that it's planning on using. It has created this particular script, and it's a behavior. It's automatically giving you a starting and an updating. So the start happens when the game very first starts up. It does the start script. When the game is continually updating, it'll constantly be running this update. It's basically once per frame that it redraws, it does this update command. Everything between the curly braces here is part of this particular method. So this goes from here to here, this goes from here to here, and the whole script goes from here to here. The word at the front means that it's not returning anything back to the game. Void means that it's not giving you back a number or anything like that. And every method, every piece of code you're going to run has these parentheses after it, which may or may not have something in the parentheses. There may be things that you type in here, for example. One last thing, these two slashes, these are comments. Think of them as notes. The computer doesn't actually use them in any way, shape, or form, but you could leave yourself a note here about what the code right after it does. So it's a pretty good way to like remind yourself of the details of what's going on. So I could change this to be whatever I want. This is the starting method. And when I run this, that'll have no effect on the actual code that's run on the inside. So the behavior that we're going to be doing is something called fixed update. So that's pre-built into mono behaviors. So there's a variety of different things pre-built into mono behaviors, one of which is fixed update. There are things like the update and start that you can use. There are other kinds of collision events that you can use. So for now, we're going to be using this particular one. All of this stuff you can find in the Unity manuals. And generally speaking, if you are looking to try and do a particular behavior, it's worth going into Google and just looking up Unity and then whatever the behavior you want is. And usually you can find someone who has at least gets you on the right track for what you need to do. So for us, we need to put in this void fixed update. I'll remove all this other pre-built stuff. Do void fixed update. Notice that it automatically does some of this stuff for me. We may or may not want that. For example, it's declaring this private. I'm going to leave that off for now. That has to do with whether or not other objects can access your code. Public means everybody can see it. Private means only this particular thing can see it. I don't think it matters that much for me, so I'm going to take off the qualifier. The next thing we're going to be looking at is how to actually move an object. And the way this works is that everything in Unity uses vectors for positioning, for acceleration, and for velocity. So a vector is basically, you might think of it as an arrow. So if I start at this point, if I go over this far and up this far, that it defines a particular arrow. And that's my position, for example, in space. So starting at the origin, I give it an x and a y, and that's my position. You can also think of this in terms of velocity. So if I have this much velocity and I get hit in this direction with that particular velocity, I get a new arrow out, which now represents my new position. These are all represented with x and y positions. And later on, we'll be getting into three-dimensional vectors, which are x, y, and z. But it's all a very similar idea, that you basically have two numbers that define position or speed or velocity or acceleration or something like that. In Unity, these are called vector 2s or vector 3s. So in our particular game, having a vector component of y of 1 means that we're going up to here. So in this particular system, right is positive x, left is negative x, up is positive y, down is negative y. And if z matters to you, z is positive going into the screen and negative coming out of the screen. 
So we're only going to be worrying about the brackets going up and down, so we're only going to worry about these two components for now. We could specifically check for particular key presses, but it turns out that Unity has a pre-built thing which has this get access raw, which will allow us to get a particular access in our space. So based on whatever input we use, whether those be keyboard events, joystick events, mouse moving up and down, whatever that thing is, we're going to grab that particular value of our input as a number, and we're going to hold it in a variable. So this particular line means that we're going to get a floating point number, so it's got a full decimal range. It's not rounded off to the nearest whole number. We named it v, and it's going to be whatever this vertical axis is. So this will be input dot get axis raw. Notice that the uppercase letters matter, so it must be capital I in this. The G, A, and R all must be uppercase and everything else lowercase. Spelling matters. So this is probably pickier than any English teacher you've ever had, that you must get the capitalization and the exact letters exactly right in the exact right order. So the one we're going to look at is vertical with a capital V. And then at the end of a line, much like the period of a sentence, you put a semicolon. So that's the dot with a comma underneath it. So this will be taking this particular number as a floating point number and assigning it into this variable v. And if we want to use v later on, it'll have whatever this number is. So next, we want to change the velocity of our racket, the speed with which it's going up, by whatever this is. So we're going to create a new vector, a new one of these directional arrows, and assign it to the speed, basically, the velocity of our particular object. So we're going to get the rigid body 2D, the thing that's actually got the physics in it, of this particular racket. So if you don't say which racket it is, it's this particular one. We set its velocity to be a new vector in that direction. So I'm going to put a new line here. Make sure you're still within these braces. Get component. Rigid body 2D. Notice that this has a lowercase b, capital R, lowercase b, capital D on 2D. It's got parentheses after it. This whole thing is a method. Dot velocity is a new vector 2, which has two things in it, an x and a y. There we go. So this is creating a new basically arrow, new vector 2, and I give it the x position first, comma, and a y position. This creates a new arrow in that direction. It'll be whatever this input was as the y position. So if I was pushing up, v will be positive up. If I was pushing down, it'll be negative number, so it'll be going down. And I'm setting the velocity of this particular object to that. One extra thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to say what the speed of this particular racket is. So this is really just purely the direction. It doesn't say how fast we're going, and that's what this speed variable is going to be. So notice that this speed variable is going to go outside before the void area, the void fixed update, and we're going to define a new variable out here and assign it a value. So right here, public float speed equals 30. Public float speed equals 30. So you say, can other people access it? What kind of thing is it? Is it a number? Is it a true or a false value? Whatever it is, you give it a name, and you say what it equals. And then notice there's a semicolon at the end. So then we're going to save all of this, and then go back into Unity and take a look at it. So if we look at this little racket left, notice down here under the script, hey, it's got this thing called speed because I just created that variable over there, and Unity knows to make it a thing that you can fill out over here. So this is where I can play with this particular speed value. So now, besides just going one pixel in a particular direction, we actually want it to go 30, basically, times that particular thing. 
So we're going to take this vector and multiply it by our speed. You can think of that in basically in terms of these arrows that you're multiplying how long this arrow is by that amount. So if this particular arrow is 1, 30 will be just 30 in that direction. So multiply is the asterisk times our speed. We leave this as a number up here instead of just putting 30 down here so it's easier to change it in one place. If I decide I want all of the things in my game to be a speed of 20, I can change it up here at the top instead of hunting through all of my code for wherever I use the number 30. So I'm using W and S, and it's controlling both. And I'm using up and down, and it's controlling both. But at least I'm able to play the game. <laughs> 